This is the second lecture video on commercial policy. In the first one, we defined commercial policy, which essentially means any government intervention which alters the composition and volume of foreign trade. And in the previous video, we distinguished between what are tariff barriers and what are non-tariff barriers. Starting from this lecture video, what we'll do is we'll analyze the consequences of commercial policy, namely in terms of tariff or non-tariff barriers on welfare of a country. And when we look at welfare consequences of anything, in a way, what we are getting into the subjective part of economics, and this is called normative economics. And in order to understand welfare consequences of any government intervention, we need to know the concept of consumer and producer surplus. So as a first step, I'll explain what we mean by consumer surplus. All of us are familiar with the demand curve, which is downward sloping. And when a curve, demand curve is downward sloping, what this represents is people are willing to, willing to buy more at a lower price and less at a higher price and so the demand curve is downward sloping and what do these different points on the demand curve show these show the maximum price this person is willing to pay for each unit for example for the first unit this person is willing to pay a maximum price of five dollars for the second unit, this person is willing to pay a maximum price of $4. For the third unit, this person is willing to pay a maximum price of $3. So this is what the demand curve is supposed to represent, and that is willingness to pay for each unit of good. So based on this demand curve, we know this person is willing to pay a maximum price of $5 for the first unit, $4 for the second unit, and $3 for the third unit. But what this person encounters is a uniform market price for this product, let's call it just actual price, where this person has to pay $3 for the first unit, $2, $3 for the second unit, and $3 for the third unit or a uniform or a constant price. But remember, this person was willing to pay a maximum price of $5 for the first unit. So because of this uniform price, this person is able to derive some benefit from this market transaction. And what is this benefit? It is the difference between $5 and $3, willingness to pay minus actual price. And how many units has this person consumed? One unit. So by paying a market price for the first unit, this person derives a benefit of $2. When this person pays $3 for the second unit, how much is the benefit derived by this person? Because this person was willing to pay a maximum price of $4. It will be $1. What about the third unit? Here the actual price matches the willingness to pay so there's no extra benefit so let us add up all this because this person pays a uniform price of three dollars per unit and ends up buying three units of this product the total benefit derived by paying a uniform price is two plus one which is three dollars this part is called the consumer surplus and here is the definition of consumer surplus. What is it? Consumer surplus is the extra benefit derived from a market transaction or is the difference between willingness to pay and the actual price. And another thing we should note in terms of calculation of consumer surplus, one way to do so is like this you can compute consumer surplus for each unit and this and then you add them up and what you get is the extent of consumer surplus 
or the extra benefit derived by a person because of market transaction. Another way to do the same thing could be just figure out the area of this triangle. Let me just shade this for you. Of this triangle. And once you figure out the area of this triangle, you can also know the extent of consumer surplus. And what is the area of a triangle? I'll just write this down. Half base, half base times height. misspelled height so let me just do that again and here we have it now look at the following the height of this triangle is 2 what is the base it is 3 so just plug in the numbers and what you will get is the area of the triangle so let's do that let me just write in my own handwriting we know the base is 3 the height is 2 and you solve for this and what you are left with is three dollars which is the same thing as this number so this is how we can calculate consumer surplus now let us look at a supply curve and we know a supply curve is upward sloping and what this means is this person is willing to sell more at a higher price and less at a lower price or there is a positive relationship between price and quantity supplied what do different points on the supply curve represent they represent the following if the price is will is one dollar this person is willing to supply or sell one unit of output if the price is two dollars this person is willing to sell the second unit second unit for two dollars and in this way this is what these points represent willingness to sell at each given price by a seller now we know the seller is willing to sell one unit of this good at one dollar but what he does is this person charges a uniform price of three dollars per unit sold so this is the actual price which is three dollars so whether this person sells one unit two units or three units that's the max this person will sell at three dollars this person will receive a uniform price of three dollars now look at the following for the first unit this person was willing to sell it for one dollar but how much is this person getting now? It is $3. So this person gets some extra benefit by charging a uniform price. And what is the extent of this extra benefit on the first unit? It is 3 minus 1, the difference in prices. Actual price minus willingness to sell times the units he sold, which is 1. So this will give us $2. That is the amount of extra benefit this person derives by selling this at a uniform price what about the second unit it is 3 minus 2 times 1 and this gives us an extra benefit of $1 what about the third unit there is no extra benefit because this person was willing to sell it for $3 and that's the price this person receives for the third unit or in other words this person derives a total benefit of three dollars by setting a uniform price two dollars from here and one dollar from here so the total benefit derived by the seller is three dollars this difference between the actual price and the price that this person is willing to sell at is called producer surplus and what is producer surplus is the extra benefit derived by a seller from a market transaction 
what is the difference between the actual price received and the price at which this person is willing to sell this is the producer surplus another thing we should note is the following we can either calculate producer surplus like this for each price or another way to do it is just figure out the area of this triangle area of this triangle and that will also give us the producer surplus now let us bring demand curve and the supply curve onto the same diagram and we know wherever these two intersect we have an equilibrium point let's call it ea and at this equilibrium point just take this to the vertical axis and you have determined the price at equilibrium and that will be three dollars per unit at this equilibrium point you can bring this point to the horizontal axis and you have determined how much will be the quantity traded that is demanded and supplied at equilibrium price and that will again be three dollars now we already know that the consumer surplus is the difference between willingness to pay and the actual uniform price and we already know this area of this triangle will be the consumer surplus which we abbreviate as cs and then we also know the difference between willingness to sell actual price and willingness to sell is the producer surplus so the producer surplus will be given by the area of this triangle and this area we have called the producer surplus so when we have a uniform price for a product as is determined in a market transaction consumers derive some kind of extra benefit which is called consumer surplus and producers also derive some kind of an extra benefit that is called producer surplus and the sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus is called the total surplus and so total surplus represents the extra benefit we derive when the prices are set in a marketplace or this is the total benefit to residents of this country which includes the producers and also the consumers so this completes our discussion of producer and consumer surplus and before we end this lecture just note at this price this country is willing to supply all that is demanded which is three units or in other words this diagram also represents equilibrium in autarky or no trade and what is the extent of total surplus when we have no foreign trade it is given by this value total surplus and what is this this is the sum of consumer and producer surplus and we know how to calculate these this is just given by the area of the triangle like here for consumer surplus and like here for producer surplus and now this lecture ends Thank you for your time.